Koïtian. President, please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is back in session. L'audience est reprise. We will now hand the floor to the prosecution. So that they can continue with their response to the objections raised by the defense teams. Pour la présentation de ces réponses aux objections soulevées par la défense. You may proceed with your remaining time. Le procureur, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Le procureur. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Uh, this afternoon, I have three annexes uh, left to respond to. Après-midi, je vais traiter de trois annexes. So, um, I will start uh, with Annex 16, je commencerai um, which par is annex a list 16. of audio and video material. Et vidéo. Um, and in the case of this annex, I will um, focus on responding uh, to the specific uh, uh, objections that have been raised je vais um, by the defense. répondre directement um, I note, à des objections uh, précises was, formulées par la défense uh, some sur general, cette annexe. Uh, regarding these documents, la défense a uh, an assertion by the Nunche defense that quote-unquote authors of these materials should appear in court so that uh, the full context of recorded statements by the accused can be understood. I think it's compris. very unclear who authors are when we're talking about video recordings or audio recordings or the actual words of the accused themselves. The accused are recorded and can be heard. Um, the Inksiri defense similarly asserts that if these recordings contain quote-unquote witness statements, they should have the right uh, to confront those persons. Now, my colleague yesterday um, responded to those uh, concepts in general. Um, so I would just note again uh, that this court has already ruled that all authors of materials do not need to appear, and that the issue regarding the use of witness interviews or statements is pending before the chamber. Uh, we certainly would take issue with the Inksiri defense attempt to characterize anything anyone ever says as a witness statement, la de uh, again, as my colleague discussed yesterday, uh, the rules regarding witness, witness statements are intended to cover certain types of statements, choses, alors specifically que, those intended hier, or at least known to be likely to be used in potential legal proceedings. Notamment des déclarations censées être utilisées dans le cadre de procédures um, judiciaires. Uh, turning to specific objections. The Inksiri defense objected to one audio recording, which was D-232-1, slash 110.1.1.49R, to repeat that, D-232-1, slash 110.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
to try to include in our annexes and disclose all past statements of witnesses that we have proposed as trial witnesses or other people who were added to the trial witness list before this court. And because of that, uh, where we have any type of statement that we have identified, um, we try to make that available as part of the proceedings. Quelconque d'un tel témoin dans le dossier, nous essayons de présenter ce document dans la mesure du possible. La défense de Q. Sampan a soulevé un certain nombre d'objections à ces enregistrements. There was an objection to document D295/2. Repeat that. D295 bar 2 slash 2.2 slash 2.25 R. I'm reading these slowly and repeating them because yesterday I was watching on video and was having a hard time keeping these numbers and had to do some searching myself to make sure I had the correct videos that had been objected to. Um, but this first video is one that's entitled Khmer Rouge Military Exercises. And there was a second uh, a video, D295 slash 2 2.56 R, D295 slash 2 slash 2.56 R which is a video entitled Khmer Rouge Industry. And the defense objection is that these were not relevant to the first trial. La fait valoir que ces enregistrements n'étaient pas pertinents pour le premier procès. These were identified in our annex as potentially relevant to the military structure and other issues. However, I did a quick review of those videos myself yesterday, and I can tell the chamber at this time that we have no present intention to play them during this trial, so the trial chamber can defer ruling on those two videos for this time. The QSEMPAN team also objects to D210 slash 5 R. Which is an audio recording of an interview of TCW 494, an entretien avec le témoin TCW 494, and to a number of other audio recordings of interviews of TCW 92, témoin TCW 92, TCW 223, and TCW 203. Uh, it was a range of four recordings that starts at uh, D269 slash 1.9R, and the case file numbers are the same for the other three, et les except sont that les the second one autres, ends sauf que le in one Point one zero R. The next one one point one one R. And the last one one point one two R. And the quatrième bar one point two R. Again, the preface to those is all D two six nine slash nine bar one point etc. These are all audio recordings. Of interviews uh, for which we have also uh, identified written transcripts. Pour lesquels nous avons aussi identifié les transcriptions. As a result, um, those the written transcripts of those interviews uh, are part of the uh, annex uh, that is pending before the trial chamber in terms of its ruling uh, as to uh, the circumstances under which such witness statements can be used. À savoir. These are also witnesses um, who have been requested to appear by uh, one of the parties in these proceedings, and that too is a matter of pending before the chamber. Uh, we would submit that um, the issue regarding the use of these audio recordings uh, will be uh, uh, dependent upon how the court rules 
on the corresponding uh, witness statements and whether or not l'utilisation uh, le recours à ces enregistrements dépendra de la comparution des témoins so uh, 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 in other words uh, th this issue will be dealt with by other rulings of this court autrement dit and not, cette question sera tranchée par d'autres uh, décisions de la chambre et n'exige pas une décision spécifique Um, the QSEMPAN team also objects <coughs> to a, a series of uh, three video recordings of interviews of QSEMPAN. Uh, those uh, are case file numbers D313.1 and D313.2. Um, and the objection as I heard it was on the grounds that the journalist who conducted the interview is unknown. And I'd like the court to just see whether the interview was unknown. And I'd like the court to just see whether the interview was unknown. And I'd like the court to just see whether the interview was unknown. Because I think it will be informative uh, to responding to this objection. So if, I, if the audio, uh, Mr. President, if the audio uh, video booth, we've identified the uh, first of these, uh, uh, first of these recordings, D13, or excuse me, bon, D313.9R, and uh, I've asked the audio video booth to play a part of that uh, uh, recording so that uh, the video court can see it. De projeter if that is un extrait de ce vidéo uh, pour que tout le monde puisse le voir et pour illustrer mon propos, si cela, bien sûr, est à la chambre. Bah. Le président. Yes, you can oui. proceed with the, this part of the video. The AV unit, you are instructed to show it as requested by the prosecution. Vous voulez projeter le document en question. Nyom, chmo kyo zom pan, a pok nyom chmo kyo long, marai nyom chmo pao kuong, a pok nyom kot pida mo kanong robob ananikum, munubo mung oh kot hoi chia, chang vang zala dum bo mo, ai kroi mo kroi mien rung ai. So, so, Mr. President, I wanted to play part of this, which I watched yesterday, um, because I heard the Defense Council yesterday saying they were not objecting just for the sake of objecting. Simplement pour euh, um, le plaisir. I don't know who the person was who Je ne sais pas qui est la personne qui a mené cette There may be only one person in this room who knows that. Il n'y a qu'une seule personne dans cette pièce qui le sait. C'est M. Kusampan lui-même. Um, but I think it is crystal clear beyond any question bien that the person bien who évident. is uh, talking in this video que is la personne que l'on voit à l'écran uh, est bel et bien Kusampan. And if he wishes Kusampan. to make an assertion. Si M. Kusampan veut affirmer qu'il s'agit d'un vidéo truqué, il est libre de le faire. Je n'ai pas entendu une telle affirmation. Je n'ai pas entendu une telle affirmation. Et je pense que ce enregistrement est évident. Et qu'il est à première vue authentique et ressemblant. Je voudrais noter, Your Honor, que il y a trois de ces vidéos. The first is 30 minutes, the second 55 minutes. And the third is uh, one hour and 55 minutes. It's unclear to me whether whether these are the same are the same si uh, recordings that are presently being transcribed. Um, de, so I will be looking into that uh, to make sure uh, to see whether or not uh, these recordings, uh, the transcript is created for these recordings, given that these are appear to be fairly substantial interviews of the accused. But in terms of admissibility, there simply can be no question that the person talking in that video is Q-Sampan. The Q-Sampan team has also objected to D-269. 
J'aimerais maintenant passer au document D269-9. 1.13 R D269 slash 9 slash 1.13 R Il s'agit d'un enregistrement audio dont le titre est CHAM interview dont le titre est The QSAMPAN team objects on the basis that it is unclear who was interviewed, who conducted the interview, fait and under what qui circumstances. A été interviewé, qui a mené um, cet entretien, et dans contrary to that assertion that I played uh, the tape yesterday, at the affirmé, very start, the interviewer identifies hier, himself as Dan uh, au début, uh, Dickinson, uh, uh, indicates uh, that he was conducting an interview on the 18th of May, 1985. Que l'interview a été faite le 18 mai 1985 avec sept témoins CHAM à Seattle. Et après cela, um, l'entretien se poursuit. Encore une fois, il me semble que c'est impossible que cette vidéo ou cet audio recording soit possible d'être utilisé dans ce procès présent. Donc, en réponse à la question de l'objection, je vais aussi informer le court. Jouer dans la uh, droite, c'est un enregistrement audio. Uh, no Il n'y a donc pas besoin que le chambre se prononce first, first sur cette bande audio dans le cadre du premier procès. The next annex um, that I will respond to is Annex 11, uh, which are the uh, trial transcripts from case 001. And the defense have objected to the use of these. And, um, and first, as a, as a general response, let me say that uh, our position is that the testimony uh, of these Witnesses from case from the case one trial um, should be treated the same as other witness statements, interviews, and testimony that are pending before the court in the rulings on annexes 12 and 13. This was probably an oversight in terms of our planning here, but uh, I think the court's rulings on other witness statements should also apply to the testimony of witnesses in the case of trial. Um, and so whatever the court rules on annexes 12 and 13, we would submit should also govern um, the uh, witness testimony in the case of trial. Um, and I note that um, we have made an effort to disclose statements from other cases um, when they relate to people who are, we have proposed as trial witnesses in this case or they've been dossier, selected. We were applauded by the Yingsari defense when we disclosed statements from such witnesses from cases three and four. The same should apply to statements or testimony of witnesses from case one. Dans les dossiers 3 et 4, uh, and I would also eh bien, add to this même, uh, cela uh, devrait that être la même chose pour uh, les déposition much of the testimony in the case one trial transcripts uh, uh, la majeure partie Dutch. des témoignages du procès he is 1 first scheduled to testify next du week. président de S21 and when he Deutsch, does so it is our position that all like with other witnesses all of his prior statements and interviews Et comme and testimony témoins, will be properly before the chamber, uh, as the accused will now débat. have a chance to cross-examine uh, the witness. La possibilité de contre -interroger ce témoin. So, uh, simply put, uh, Annex 11 uh, can be dealt, thrown, thrown into the same group as Annexes 12 Annex and 13. And ruled on and subject to that ruling. Dans le même groupe que les annexes 12 et 13 qui feront l'objet d'une décision de la Chambre ultérieurement. Voilà notre position. And that brings me to the last annex that I will address today, which is Annex 10, the S21 confessions. Dernière annexe dont je vous parle aujourd'hui, l'annexe 10. This is an issue that. We could talk at length about 
I will not, will not do that today. I will endeavor to make a few general comments um, de faire because générales. I think the issues um, that relate to the use of these documents in the current trial um, are somewhat more limited than perhaps issues that will arise uh, in a case that includes S21. Um, the defense objections that were made in the last few days uh, were general objections based on the torture convention and relevance. I at least did not hear any objections based on authenticity. Um, I nonetheless note that there can be little question about the authenticity of these particular records. Um, as with other documents from S21, there is a fairly consistent structure or format to the documents, uh, as well as thumbprints, uh, repeated initials, signatures, uh, many indicia uh, of authenticity. Uh, on top of that, uh, donc, uh, the chairman plus, of S21, de Deutsch, et le uh, has confirmed de S21, uh, the authenticity Deutsch, of many of these confessions. Grand uh, de both the underlying documents themselves les and importantly base, also même, annotations plus made on the documents by himself, les qu a lui -même by Son Sen, au document, by Noon Chia, and, uh, and uh, some of the interrogators. Et certains des interrogateurs. So there is no question about the authenticity of, uh, of these records. De ces documents ne fait pas de now, in regards uh, to the general admissibility of the documents, and the defense objection based on the torture convention, et les objections uh, défense, I would make a few uh, observations at this time. Torture, en effet, First, uh, as my colleague discussed uh, yesterday, uh, the torture convention Comme mon has a very hier, express criteria that only results in the exclusion of statements shown to have been obtained by torture. De déclaration dont il est prouvé qu uh, qu ont été in their discussions par and objections, I've heard some fairly broad statements um, from the defense counsel, de de la statements de to the effect that anything associated with S21 is tainted and should be viewed with skepticism. And admittedly, these statements are vague, but it suggests that the defense would like the court to build a wall around S21 and not allow any evidence related to the operation of that prison before this court. Aucun um, but of course, that, that is not the law. Dans le prétoire, mais cela pas uh, le droit there is no fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine uh, that applies de fruit to de the torture convention. Qui, uh, and I realize that that term may not translate well. Uh, uh, so let me explain. La uh, case expliquer. Some people do not know, uh, understand that reference. Uh, uh, there is a doctrine, uh, there is a doctrine uh, developed. Uh, developed in American jurisprudence, en jurisprudence aux that if an illegal search of a suspect's rights has been violated, si illegal 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 an illegal search has been conducted, uh, evidence, any evidence that results de from the violation de cette of the rights illégale, from the illegal search cannot be used. Not only the evidence that was immediately taken in the illegal search, but evidence, subsequent evidence that was illégale, derived as a result of that initial violation. Et qui de cette there is no such de doctrine in regards Il to the torture convention. Dans le cadre uh, de la convention contre la the torture. accused would like there to be, they would like uh, accusés, any use of uh, anything that was done by interrogators at S21 que tout, to be off, uh, par un uh, S21 to be barred so that we can't talk about it. But of course, that is inconsistent consistent with the purpose of the torture convention, which mm. is to mm. ensure that mm. people are prosecuted for torture. So to put this another way, there is no rule that bars the admission showing how S21 confessions were used by the regime. As one example of that, the fact that copies of confessions were sent to Son Sen, to Nguyen Chea, and to the heads of the organizations of the interrogated cadres, and used by them as a basis 
interrogés. To identify other suspect cadres ces aveux ont servi à identifier d'autres cadres suspects au sein de ces organismes. The facts of how these confessions le fait, were used are legitimate issues uh, before the court that are not barred by the torture convention. Because to do so pas, would prevent the prosecution uh, of one of the convention. largest schemes of torture, torture that the world has ever seen. Car cela empêcherait de démontrer un des plus grands systèmes de torture jamais qui ait jamais existé. Second general point regarding the Deuxième torture convention is that one of the intended uses of all the documents in this annex is simply to identify the persons who were detained, interrogated, and tortured at S21. I have already heard at least one of the defense teams uh, openly concede that this is a permissible use of confessions that falls within the exception of Article 15 of the Convention. And indeed, de ces this is the very reason that some en of the S21 confessions, as voilà well as prisoner lists, are cited et les listes in de paragraphs of the closing order ces sont cités uh, in dans the les upcoming segment, de 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 segment that we're trying. And I refer to qui, uh, paragraphs 38, 43, 50, 38, 48, 50 38, and 99, 43, 50 and 99 um, de which de are structure. paragraphs that uh, talk about uh, the arrests or reference to the arrests of uh, members of the Central Committee and party leaders du comité permanent et des, and cite uh, as evidence of that uh, prisoner, prisoner lists de cela, or confessions de from S21 to S21. show that in fact these people were arrested. Le fait que ces personnes ont bien les bel et bien été because of this fairly simple point, um, the issue of admissibility in regards to S21 confessions we submit is a relatively easy one, as no one has disputed that these confession, confessions are at least admissible um, for that purpose of identifying the persons who were detained at S21. And we would submit, Your Honors, that the real issue that is before you will not be admissibility of these documents, but rather the permissible uses of the documents. Ne sera pas nécessairement la responsabilité de ces documents, mais surtout l'utilisation de ces documents. Uh, C'est pourquoi je parlerai des autres uh, utilisations possibles uh, des aveux provenant de S21 comme explication pour montrer that, en quoi ces documents um, sont pertinents. Uh, J'ai un dernier commentaire uh, like de nature générale regarding the application of the torture concernant l'applicabilité de la Convention um, contre la torture. Uh, the different types of documents Et cela touche les that are contained within the S21 confession files dans that are part of this annex. Provenant de S21 qui font partie de cette annex. It is very important for the Chamber uh, to understand that these files often contain much more que ces than just the signed confession bien plus of the S21 detainee. S21. Uh, in fact, it would be more accurate to describe uh, these documents en fait, as the entire exact. files maintained by S21 relating to individual prisoners. Qui existait à 21 sur chacun de ces so the documents uh, that are listed on this annex often include, les que in addition à cette annex to the actual confessions, souvent, en plus, notes aveux, between, exchanged notes between the interrogators entre les and, Deutsch, et Deutsch, and reports from the interrogators et des to Deutsch des and his superiors et ses describing the process of how the detainee was interrogated la, whether or not torture was used, et décrit, à savoir their assessment si of the information obtained, and other matters. Des par les These other documents are not statements uh, of the detainee. They are not statements that were obtained by torture. Ou les they are communications par la torture. Il either between uh, entre the cadres in S21 les de S21 or communications in which S21 cadres are reporting uh, to the higher level Entre eux, on what was going on in the prison. Avec As such, there is no basis for them to be excluded by the torture convention. Donc, de les en la convention contre la now, torture. I recognize that uh, a lot of these documents will be much more important uh, uh, when we get uh, to a trial regarding 
torture and crimes that were committed at S21. Um, there are frequent uh, these, these reports that were prepared by the interrogators uh, and often sent to the superiors, uh, to Deutsch superiors, uh, often describe uh, in detail the use of torture and other matters. Um, but there is other information that sometimes appear in these that will also be important uh, to these proceedings. And that is why uh, it is important to understand that these documents are more than just confessions from the detainees. Now, proceeding to relevance, um, there are a number of reasons uh, as to why uh, the S-21 confessions are relevant to the current proceedings, uh, in addition to the matter I've already discussed, which is, uh, as with the S-21 biographies, as with the S-21 prisoner records, they are a way to identify the persons who were, who were detained at S-21, and that list uh, is a very reflective list that shows uh, the, the organizational structure of the regime because of the fact that prisoners came from all different organizations. But in, in addition to that basic uh, use, um, there are a number, at least three other uses that I will uh, briefly touch upon uh, of these S-21 confessions. Uh, that are relevant to the current proceedings. The first such issue is that the documents, these documents demonstrate the authority and responsibility of the standing committee, the accused, and the heads of DK organizations for security matters. The authority structure of the re regime and what were the relevant respective authorities of the standing committee, uh, heads of ministries, heads of zones, is part of the upcoming segment uh, of this trial. Um, what do the S-21 confession files uh, tell us about that issue? Well, quite, quite a lot, actually. Uh, starting with uh, something that I think most people are familiar with, um, which is that the cover pages of these confessions are frequently and usually annotated, um, typically in handwriting, in either Doik's handwriting, Son Sen's handwriting, and sometimes Nun Che's handwriting, with annotations um, indicating who the confessions were sent to. We have identified so far um, at least 26 confessions that have an annotation uh, written by either Deutsch or Son Sen indicating that the confession was sent to Nun Chea. I will not list those 26 confessions at this time, uh, but when we get uh, as part, certainly as part of the proceedings, some of them will be presented, and when we get to the conclusion and are asked uh, to the stage where we are to present important documents, um, we will certainly uh, submit the entire list to you at this time, but I will spare you at this time for me reading into the record the list of 26 documents. There are an additional uh, number of confessions um, so far in which Doik has identified the handwriting as that of Nun Chea. And there are other uh, confessions that have a more general annotation, uh, such as uh, from Son Sen or Doik, indicating they were sent to brother. There are confessions uh, annotated, indicating they were sent to Ing Suri. And there are many confessions um, that also have annotations indicating they were sent to, for example, the Northwest Zone uh, Secretary, if it was a, sec a confession of a cadre from that zone, uh, to a, the head of a military division, if it was a cadre from that division, uh, and so on. In other words, uh, as Deutsch, Deutsch has testified, it was the standard practice to send a copy of the confession uh, to the head of the organization. The fact uh, that this process occurred 
Le fait qu'une um, procédure de ce genre ait été établie et suivie démontre uh, clairement qui avait uh, on arrests de and what were the responsibilities uh, of the relative organizations de in Democratic Campuchia and what was the responsibility of the accused. As I noted this morning, in the next Comme trial segment, matin, uh, the issue is the military procès, structure and the roles of the accused in relation to military security matters. Des des de uh, in addition to the annotations, Uh, showing who the responsible uh, leaders of Democratic Campuchia who, um, who received these confessions. Um, there are also uh, significant uh, statements in uh, some of the uh, documents extraneous to the confessions that I mentioned. So, for example, An example of this is a document D288 slash 6.5 slash 2.47. This is a confession uh, of a cadre um, from a district in the East Zone uh, named Chap Mit. And Included in the confession file is a handwritten note from Deutsch to his interrogator, Pong. And point two of Deutsch's note um, advises Pong that, quote, brother number two has advised on the 25th of February, 1978, that the names of certain cadres must be withdrawn if they appear in this confession. And there is a list of various leaders of sectors and military divisions from the East Zone. What is the significance of this document? Clearly, this is pretty strong uh, confirmation uh, of uh, Nunche's role uh, and, and providing instructions to Doit uh, regarding uh, S21 and the interrogations. Um, admittedly, this will be more important. This is one of these issues that we talked about yesterday that is a foundational issue of who had what responsibility that will be part of the basis for, for this and future trials. But uh, there are references like this um, that are not part of the statements of the detainee. This is a statement by Doit. Uh, so there is no argument that this could be barred by the torture convention. And it's a contemporaneous statement that very clearly shows Nunchea's role in these matters. Uh, another a uh, couple of examples uh, of some documents uh, that are separate from the confessions uh, that you will find in these files um, that are relevant uh, on this basis. Uh, one is, uh, the, is in the confession uh, of Hunim, who was the Minister of Propaganda. And one of the initial documents uh, that's found in this Uh, in this uh, IS 5.30, which is the document, uh, is a letter that Hunim wrote. Um, a letter addressed to, quote, um, Brother Paul, Brother Nguyen, Brother Van, Brother Vorn, Cadre Q and Hem. The letter starts Today, the 10th of April, 1977, while I was extremely busy preparing a radio broadcast to memorialize the second anniversary of the great victory of 17 April, 1975, Cadre Pang called me on the phone to work with Ankar. Pang, for those of you who don't know, was the chairman of S-71. Um, one of the principal de organizations responsible for uh, arresting uh, cadres and taking them to S21. 
et de les amener à S21. Hunim continues. Hunim continue. Quote, I was very surprised and did not expect to be arrested by a military. At first, I did not believe that it was the group of Cadre Pang. I was not guilty as I did not betray and I was truthful with Ankar. I suspected that some enemies may have implicated me. He then goes on to continue and at the end of his letter states, quote, I firmly reassure the party that I have never betrayed the party at all. I have never been involved with the CIA, the Vietnamese, the Sun Nukhtans, agents or liberalists. Now again, this is a document, as indicated at the outset, that was written by Hu Nim at the time he was arrested, a letter he sent to the people that he understood as the Ministry of Propaganda to be responsible for his arrest. And the people he addressed this letter to, saying, why are you arresting me? I'm not a traitor. Uh, that list includes Pol Pot, Nguyen Chea, Ng Suri, Warren Vet, Son Sen, and Q Son Pan. Again, this is another compelling piece of contemporaneous evidence that shows the Standing Committee uh, and uh, uh, Central Committee members as well uh, responsibility in relation to security matters. A similar type of document uh, is found in the confession file uh, of the Ministry, uh, minister, I'm sorry, the Minister of Agriculture, Chase Swan, uh, alias Non Swan. Uh, this is document IS 5.69. And contained again within this confession file uh, is a number of documents that are separate uh, from the actual confession of the detainee. The president. The president. Could the international co-prosecutor. J'aimerais demander au co-procureur international. Prosecutor. Refer against to a name of the foreign minister. De redonner le nom. Because the name was not caught up by the interpreter. Parce que l'interprète n'a pas entendu le nom. Yes, the, 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 the uh, detainee was the uh, Minister of Agriculture, and the name, um, uh, Che Swan, let me spell, um, first the family name, C-H-E-Y, uh, and then S-U-O-N, alias Non Swan, N-O-N, N -O -N. And second name S U O N. And uh, contained uh, within um, IS 5.69 uh, is a number of, of documents that are separate from the actual confession, qui, uh, uh, including a letter de, de, de or note. Il y a um, une that was sent from the interrogator, qui a été par uh, interrogator Pon, again, qui était, donc, on the 15th of November Pond, 1976, he wrote a uh, several-page letter or note uh, to the detainee, uh, and one of the initial statements at the very Et start of this letter, letter indicates that his uh, detention was a matter that had been decided by the standing committee detenu, of the party. Décision a été prise par le comité permanent du um, parti. So I cite this again as examples Je of materials that are separate from the confessions de um, that will be relevant um, to the authority of the standing committee, authority of the accused in relation uh, to security de matters et la responsabilité de ces derniers pour les questions de sécurité. I have touched upon this already, but a, a second um, 
uh, area or issue uh, Il y a in une these autre proceedings uh, that uh, these confessions are relevant to où, uh, is that the annotations uh, themselves show the annotations show how the confessions uh, were sent to various heads of organizations and therefore uh, uh, reflect the reporting uh, system that existed between the center and between zones and uh, military divisions as to how information was reported between them uh, regarding security issues and in particular uh, how communications were done as to people who were, who were to be viewed as suspect and monitored. And the principal way that that was done was through uh, the communication uh, of uh, the S21 confessions, in particular the lists of implicated cadres. Um, so these documents also have relevance um, to the communication structure and how information was reported uh, in the regime. And uh, the last uh, area, or uh, enfin, way in which these documents are relevant uh, concerns uh, an issue that uh, is uh, uh, part of the next phase uh, uh, phase of the trial um, and that is paragraph 112 of the closing order uh, this is a section of the closing order that deals with communications and it deals with various uh, entities uh, uh, communication organizations within the Ministry of Propaganda, uh, one of which was the radio, the DK radio uh, system. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion already about the DK radio broadcasts that were captured by FIBIS, uh, also captured by the BBC Summary World of Broadcasts. We've seen a number of those documents. Uh, but in uh, paragraph 112 of the closing order, which is part of the next segment, um, uh, the start of that uh, paragraph, the first sentence is as follows. Confessions of Vietnamese prisoners of war who had been interrogated at S21 were broadcast over the radio. So uh, what is the evidence of that? Well, there are many, of course there are many um, DK radio broadcasts um, that can be put before the court uh, in which Vietnamese uh, confessions of Vietnamese prisoners were broadcast and captured um, by, FIP, by uh, reported in FIBIS. Um, but we have uh, identified, been able to match up four of those radio broadcasts to actual S21 confessions that we have in the files um, so that the court can see uh, that what was broadcast on the Democratic Campuchia responds exactly to the, S, the confession that was found years later at Tool Slang. This is significant for, for quite a few reasons. Um, first of all, purely in terms of the reliability of uh, the FIBIS reports, uh, this is pretty good corroboration um, that when FIBIS reported matters that were broadcast on the Democratic Campuchia radio, they got it right. Uh, you can follow the FIBIS report and see how it, how it matches paragraph by paragraph with the confession from S21. Um, so there is a significance to these documents uh, to corroborate the accuracy of FIBIS records, which is something we've talked a lot about in this proceeding, so it's an important issue. Um, but even beyond that, more, more than that, the fact that the radio station at the Ministry of Propaganda was broadcasting word for word confessions that came from S21 is a very important fact as it shows control, organized control of this process by the leaders. Obviously, it took uh, directives uh, from fairly senior people for confessions to get from Touche's organization at S21 over to a radio broadcasting uh, uh, office that was part of the Ministry of Propaganda. Um, so, 
I will give you some of the, the documents that we've been, where we've been able to match um, the uh, DK radio broadcast of the confession to an actual confession that was found at S21 so that the court has that information as part of its record. But the reason I'm bringing this up now is simply that this is one more use uh, of S21 confessions that fits within the issues that are about to be tried by this court. So let me uh, give to you the, the four examples that we found. Um, D. Uh, 108 Le document D108 slash 50 slash 1.40 uh, contains uh, is the FIBIS report of a 12 June 1978 broadcast by the uh, Phnom Penh Domestic Service, which was radio the uh, DK radio operation, uh, of the confession of a Vietnamese spy, Tran Nok Tung, which confession uh, was dated 9th of June 1978. The S21 confession that corresponds exactly to that radio broadcast is document D175 slash 2.4, D175 slash 2.4, which is the S21 confession of this Vietnamese prisoner of war. The second example uh, the DK radio broadcast is contained in D108 slash 50 slash 1.29. That's D108 slash 50 slash 1.29. It is uh, the report. Uh, and it contains uh, a report uh, broadcast on the 10th of April 1978 of a confession uh, of Vin Min Chao that was made on the 3rd of April 1978. And I think that this is part of a a large uh, one of the monthly FIBIS reports. So let me give the specific year-end pages for this This one. Uh, they are English 00168793 to 168794. French ERN 00316472. Through three one six four six five, jusqu'à quatre cent soixante cinq, and and Khmer, ERN zero zero two two five three four two, through two two five three four five. And the S21 confession, which again corresponds exactly to what was broadcast over the radio by the Ministry of Propaganda, uh, is a uh, document um, uh, that was identified uh, uh, as a new document uh, in our uh, July or April uh, filing. Uh, it is ERN uh, 00 through 233 in English. In Khmer, uh, the relevant uh, the pages are ERN 000 Nine two three through zero 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 five two and nine three five. 
And I think the French translation of this is still pending. And just to clarify, um, this was a document that we disclosed as part of our original document list back uh, at the start of last, or in April of last year, a year ago, um, before the start of trial. So when we listed these documents in the annex as new, it was simply because these documents did not have case file numbers. Uh, these should be distinguished from uh, documents that are subject to the uh, standard, higher standards as new documents introduced after the start of trial. Um, uh, so I want to make sure that that clarification, that that is clear because I know this is an issue that, that, that has come up. And uh, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, the uh, other two examples, um, document D108-28-2008, that's D108-28-2008, uh, this is a BBC broadcast uh, uh, summarizing um, the broadcast of a, uh, a confession uh, from the DK radio uh, and of a individual named Vong Nok Sun and the corresponding S21 confession uh, that we have identified is document D. 175 slash 2.5. That's D175 slash 2.5. And the last example, uh, the uh, radio broadcast is a document IS 12.29. Uh, which specifically relates to a uh, broadcast on the 21st of April 1978 of a confession by a Vietnamese uh, female, Vo T. Tui, and the matching uh, S21 confession uh, that was found at Tool Slang is document D108-9.2. D108-9.2. Um, so just to conclude, uh, this is another um, uh, the last of my examples of other relevant uses uh, of the S21 confessions for purposes of this, these trial proceedings. Uh, that concludes uh, my comments on these annexes. I think we've now addressed all the, all the annexes that, uh, uh, that were the subject of these proceedings. So I appreciate the time uh, and uh, uh, we have concluded our comments at this time. Thank you, the international hey. co-prosecutor. Le président, je vous remercie, Monsieur le procureur. After the break, then it will be the turn Après for pause, the lead co-lawyers to respond to the objections raised by the defense teams. The time is now appropriate for a break. Uh, we will take a 20-minute break and we shall return so that we can resume our proceeding.